It's getting on for 12 years ago now that I uploaded the most popular video on this channel. It's not the best video, but the most popular one by quite some margin. And it's about this Nixie watch. Now, I've got this on upside down for the camera's benefit because it's got a tilt operation. So I don't know if you can see that working there. If not, I'll do a close up. But this has got like, I don't know, 5 million views or something, uh, the video about that watch. Now, five or so years later, or five and a half years later, um, the chap behind that, David, made a smaller one. And uh, that's this one here. Now, he sent me this one for free. So I bought that one. He sent me that one. Now, the reason I actually found out about this in the first place was that I wasn't looking for a Nixie watch. I was on his website looking at a scope clock. These are clocks made out of oscilloscopes. Now, he'd uh, made some of these in the past. And when I went on there, he was no longer selling them, but he was selling this Nixie watch and uh, I ended up buying one. So a uh, bit of history there. But the reason I'm mentioning all this isn't because of these, which, by the way, are both still working, which is a good sign. It's because of this. I'm really excited to open this up. I've been itching to open it for days, but I've kept it sealed until I made this video because he got in touch with me a couple of weeks ago and says, I've got a new scope clock out. So we're going all the way back now to what I originally went on his website to look for. So in here, I've got the new scope clock from Cathode Corner and he's manufacturing these and he will sell them to you and they're not cheap but I'm pretty sure that if you want one, you're not going to find one very easily anywhere else. So let's have a look in this and see exactly what you get for your money. Now, at the time of recording, one of these costs approximately 500 US dollars. And since I've been given this one for free, I'm going to put this video as includes a paid promotion. Put that little thing down at the bottom there, because after all, it's payment in kind. Now, it isn't just a clock. It does have a couple of neat little features, which I'm hoping to show you later on. Let's just look at this first. So I've got a UK plug already on there and a few alternate adapters. Output 12 volts. So I've got a barrel plug on there. Let's get into this. There we go. Just look at that. That is a thing of beauty. I mean, you don't know how long I've waited to get hold of something like this. Well, you do, because I just mentioned it at the beginning. But it was even longer than that when I started looking for one. But this has been really beautifully assembled. Scope Clock by Cathode Corner. Now, if you go to scopeclock.com, that'll take you straight to this. Custom circuit board in here. The tube itself on the front, that's exposed there. So we've got the plastic surround and then the tube just comes through. So... That's the glass screen there at the front. Right, let's plug it in. Okay, so on the back here, we've got a, a USB and a micro USB, and then we've got the main power. Upon switching on for the first time, you're greeted with this settings menu. You can choose the option you want by turning the rotary encoder at the bottom. The highlighted option can be chosen by pushing the button in. So if we go into set locale here, the reason some of these options are in here are because you can attach an external GPS time receiver to the USB port on the back. That's an option. I haven't got that. So there's not much point me telling it where I am with relation to GMT. But if you had that, that would enable it to automatically set the time for you. I prefer to have a 24 hour clock and uh, I don't need to bother with the daylight savings time, but I'll change the mains frequency to 50 hertz. So if we go out of there, I'll need to set the time and date in here, or at least I would if I hadn't just done it a minute ago. But yeah, it's uh, 1.28 in the afternoon. I could uh, just change that very easily. And we've got the date at the bottom there, the 15th of December, 21. So everything is set. So let's get out of here and have a look at the clock faces. So the first one, nice clear digital clock, hours and minutes. Moving on, we get the seconds added to there. I prefer something with seconds on just to get that kind of movement on a clock. But there are other options as well. If you we move on to the next one, we get the day and the date as well as the time. And just looking at that, it's a really sharp font on here. Really nice and clear. I will mention at the top left here, we can adjust the brightness. And at the right hand side, we can get the focus perfectly sharp. You do tend to get a little bit out of focus as you move towards the edges of the tube. It's just uh, the nature of the display. But you can center your image horizontally with that control and vertically with that one. But now we'll move on to the next one because we can take off the day but add on the seconds. 
And then the next thing, well, it's not a clock face, it's haikus. Now, I'm not too sure how many of these there are in the memory, but they will cycle through every few seconds. Of course, the disadvantage of this is you've got no time on the display. So you've got this more as a sort of art piece if you have the haikus on the screen. But then if we move on again, we go back to clocks. We've got a nice analog clock there. Now, analog clocks lend themselves particularly well to these oscilloscope displays due to the round nature. And we also, of course, get to seconds hand on there. OK, so we've got clocks, we've got haikus, but this is the one I wasn't expecting. We have games now. The games are, well, there's two of them. The first one is a variant of Pong, although, of course, I'm not going to call it Pong because it's not an officially licensed one. And I know the people behind the game get a little bit litigious if anyone says that they've got Pong on their device. So we'll just call it Ping Pong. But you know what it is. And you can see we've got a proper score system at the top there. The first one to 11 wins the game. And we can also put a bit of spin on the ball. So it's a really good game, a good version of it. And we've got the full analog controls, the um, rotary encoders at the bottom left and right here. Those are used to move the bats up and down. So it's a, it's a really, really good version. This probably as good as any that I've played for many years because of course there were a lot of these analog type games back in the late 70s but once you start trying to put pong into the digital age it all gets a little bit tricky so it feels right on this now one thing i will say about it is of course there's no sound rather obviously so that is a little bit of a limitation it means also we don't have any alarm clock on this device um whether there's any sound coming through on this video from the tube the crt i doubt it with it being an oscilloscope but if anyone's noticing any well that's because i can't hear it so it's only on the video by accident but something to bear in mind also one feature that isn't on here this device doesn't switch off overnight uh, there isn't like a timed uh, period where this display goes off and there's no on off button on the device itself so if you want to turn it off you'd have to unplug it but we'll move on to the next game now so this one is a version of Tetris. I don't think these people are, are too fussed when anyone says the device has a version of a Tetris type game on it. Uh, again, we've got a score on the right there. We've got a thing telling us what our next um, piece is going to be. And uh, there's no quick drop option for your shapes here, but you rotate them left or right using the right hand control. And then the left hand one moves them to the left or right. And it basically just plays a game of Tetris. Uh, the only thing I'll say after playing these games in here, though, because I'm using the left and right controls at the bottom, that's meaning that I've uh, adjusted the settings for the screen position. So once I get out of this game, you'll find that the clock has moved position like that. So you then have to just uh, bring it back into the center. But it's not too much of a big deal. Now, just a couple of additional things to mention here. The display is definitely easier to read in subdued lighting, so you don't really want to put this in a bright room. And as far as the dimensions go, the screen itself is around seven and a half centimeters across. The case, though, is just under 12 centimeters wide, 16 centimeters tall, and 27 centimeters deep. That includes the knobs that protrude on the front. Now, if you want alternate measurements, it's about as tall as a cup noodle with a tangerine on the top, and about as deep as this piece of string. Now, I mentioned it costs $500. However, if you are prepared to put one together yourself, you can save $100 on that price through buying a kit. And if you are interested, both the schematics and the Arduino code are available online. Now, if there is something you feel I've missed in this video, something I haven't covered, rather than getting your question buried in amongst all the others on YouTube, I'd recommend first going to the website and you should be able to find the information that you need on there. So here is the battery backup, a standard CR2032 button cell. You can see it through the top. That's said to be good for up to five years. But when it comes time to replace it, it would just be a matter of undoing the screws on either side of the case and slide another button cell in. Now, oscilloscope clocks emerge from very much the same place as Nixie clocks in that the oscilloscope tube and the Nixie tube are both generally laboratory equipment and they've been misappropriated or repurposed as timekeeping devices by some enthusiastic amateurs. However, in the case of a Nixie clock, 
they become really a commercial item. You can find lots and lots of people selling you various different kinds of Nixie clocks. There are plenty of Nixie tubes to go around and there are people making new Nixie tubes now. As far as oscilloscope tubes go, I'm not sure whether or not anyone's manufacturing these new. I, I, I wouldn't imagine so. And even if they weren't, as far as new old stock oscilloscope tubes, I'm sure they're a lot harder to find than a Nixie tube is. So you'll never get the same kind of mass take up of oscilloscope clocks as you do of Nixie clocks. And for that reason, you won't see very many of these around at all. Now, you might recall I've got a bit of a history with objects that look a little bit like this. You might remember the Prison Tech video, which had the clear television in it, and the purpose for that being clear was to stop people hiding contraband within their televisions. But the reason I bought it is because I think a CRT looks beautiful when it's on display like this, but this one looks even more attractive. To me, that's art. I'd gladly have that on a shelf just looking like that. If that's all it did, I'd be happy. But then you turn it around and of course you've got a clock in it, which is again something that I really like. You'll have seen over the years I've featured many a clock on this channel. There's just something about timepieces that attracts me. So these two things together, you can see, or I can see why I went shopping for one of these 12 or so years ago and why now I've finally got one. Now, I should mention that since this was sent to me for free, which is something I'm very much appreciative of, I am aware that that could make this whole video just look like one long commercial. But in response to that, I will say that if you decide to buy one of these after watching this video, I'm not on any kind of commission. And this is quite a niche product, so I can't imagine too many people want to order one right now. But I will also add that I've known David at Cathode Corner now for over 12 years. And if he had got in touch with me and said he is making a new oscilloscope clock, I would have gone and ordered one from him anyway. So we'd have ended up in the same position. I'd have been showing it to you, putting some links across the bottom of the screens to where to get it from. The only difference is that my bank balance looks a little bit healthier than it would have done if I'd ordered one for myself. Thanks, David. This is just a, a gorgeous object and I'm very much appreciative of it. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it as well. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>